What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today we are continuing with the GTA 6 tutorial series and in this episode we will set up the player stats, so the health and stamina. This will be an actor component so that means that we can add this to the player or the enemy AI in the future, it's gonna be very versatile. Remember that you can have full access to the profiles through Patreon or YouTube members. It's going to be a very easy video to follow so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do is go to the blueprint folder, gonna right click and create a new blueprint class. In this case, as I mentioned in the intro, this is gonna be an actor component. So all the code will be separated in another blueprint and then we can just attach this component to whatever actor we want to have this stats, like the player or enemy AIs in the future or our dummy to test over here. So let's name this something as BPC as blueprint component underscore actor stats or just stats i think that it will work so let's go ahead and open up this new blueprint component and what we need to do is set up some variables so let's go to the class defaults here my blueprint variable section let's create a new variable and the first one will be basically the current health okay and let's set this as a float so we can have decimals and be very accurate with our damage and everything then with that, let's go ahead and create one which will be the max health, okay? And that way we can, you know, set up uh, how much our max health we want to have. And also maybe in the future, increase your max health if you level up or whatever. But, you know, GTA doesn't really have to level up, uh, you know, XP systems and so on. So we will not really go into that route, but we can have it there uh, just in the future. And then we will have another one with current stamina again as a float and then another one with you know max stamina okay there we go so uh what we're going to do right now is also create some categories okay so we can have things a bit more organized so in this case let's select the current health go to the category and we can just write here health we can press enter and boom new category let's click on max health and now we can you know go to the drop down and select health because a new category was created Let's do the same with the stamina. There we go. Oh, I did not spell that correct. Stamina. And then on here, let's go ahead and select stamina. Cool. So now let's compile, save, uh, you know, delete those nodes. And let's start to create some functions. The first function will basically be, you know, decrease health. Okay, so when you you know the actor or whatever the player enemy whatever and um, you know has some damage it will decrease the health so for this we will get the current health the one that we have right now and you know subtract it by a value what value well this will be the damage and of course this can be any number so to do this you know more versatile what i'm going to do is just drag this into a new input and now if i select this we can you know change the name to damage and boom this will be the incoming damage and we will you know subtract it from our current health then from there i'm gonna go ahead and set the current health to be this new value so we will update the variable and then this will you know take our damage but of course now we need to do a check and it is if our player has our actor um and you know has the health lower or equal to zero in that case we want the actor to die so let's go ahead and just add a branch over here and i'm gonna drag in again current health I'm gonna do a less or equal to zero node. And if this is true, that means that this actor has to die and is false, we are totally okay. So for this, I'm gonna select this function node and create a new output, which is gonna be a Boolean, okay? So true or false. And this is gonna be um, is dead, okay? Is dead. And let's put a question mark here and put this over here. And in this case, this will be true. And on here, this will basically go and output false so that way whenever we call this we can receive if the actor is dead or not and we can do something there okay so cool with that said we will also do the same but to increase the health okay imagine that our character is healing up so increase health okay and it'll be very similar to what we did we will get the current health of this actor and we will uh, add a value in this case what well another input and this will be the added health right and again a float we will then go ahead and set the current health with this new value so it will be updated and then what we need to do is check 
if this will be in range. What does this mean? Well, that basically it will not go out of our max health value, right? So for this, I'm just going to make a simple branch over here and check if our current health is basically going bigger than our current max health. If so, what we want to do is just set the current health to be like uh, max health. And that way, it will never go out of bounds. It will never be uh, greater than our max health. And of course, we could also um, go ahead and do it with a nice node, right? Uh, with a clamp node. But I prefer to have it like this because it's, it helps visually. All right, so with that said, uh, we're good to go. We have our functions created and our variables done. So let me also create some categories um, for, actually we cannot, yes, we can actually, uh, for our functions, okay? And that way we have them organized and then we do the same, uh, but for stamina. And this is going to be a challenge, okay? I want you to go ahead and pause the video and create two new functions which are gonna be for increased stamina and decrease stamina. And basically it will be exactly the same of what we have done with the health. Like literally it's exactly the same setup, but instead of uh, with health variables, it will be with stamina variables. So pause the video, give this a go, and we will cover this in a second. All right, so let's go and create a new function and let's call this something as decrease stamina and let's assign this to the stamina uh, category. Now with this, we're gonna go ahead and just get the current stamina and add a subtract node, so minus. And again, this will be a new input value, which will be the, you know, uh, decreased stamina, okay? And of course, you can call this whatever you want. Uh, I, I did not name this correctly. There we go. And then we just need to get the current stamina, set it to this new value. So we will update the variable with this new calculation. Then what we need to do is just check with a branch if our current stamina is less or equal to zero. If so, we will want to notify the actor that it does not have any more stamina left. So let's create a new output as a boolean, so true or false, and this will be um, uh, stamina not left. Okay, and in this case, this will be set to true, and then on here, this will be set to false. Great, and make sure that, of course, you're using the current stamina uh, variable and not the current health variables on the graph because it might be confusing and you might do it by accident so make sure to check that and then let's create another function which will be in this case increase stamina with the category of stamina and we'll do exactly the same as we did with health but with stamina so we'll get the current stamina and add a new value what will this value be well a new input on the function which will be the um add a stamina and then we will get the current stamina and set this variable to be this new calculation. And then we need to check if this is in bounds, so it will not go more than our max stamina. So we will just get the current stamina and check that it's not uh, greater, okay, than our max stamina. And this will be a condition over here. And then we will just go ahead and uh, uh, set the current stamina to be our max stamina just as we did with our uh, increased health in here as you can see so uh, With that we are good to go Just make sure to set some default values in this case our max health will be a hundred and our max stamina will be a hundred and we'll just make sure to set that up and then on the event graph I'm gonna add a begin play and right at the start of the game I am going to set the current health and current stamina to be their max value. So max health over here and max stamina over here. And that way, we you know, we just need to update one place and not two places. Okay, cool. And of course, you know, uh, if you want to change the values here, you can do so to not have a hundred and so on. But for now, it will do, you know, and then when you finish up a bit more of the systems and you start to 
play test and uh, you know test the values that you know that will work all right so now we can go ahead and add this bpc stats component into our player blueprint so let's go ahead and just double click to open this up and now we can add it on the component section so let's search for bpc stats there we go enter as you can see we also have the default depth values over here so we can you know double check them and change them from here and not the whole blueprint and now on the event graph as you can see we don't have any health or whatsoever so what we need to do is add this node which is the apply uh, sorry apply not damage not but event any damage so we already used this in the dummy basically when the actor receives damage we call this event and we just have access to the incoming damage and also like the damage causer and who did it right anyway so with that said uh what we need to do is just get the bpc stats and just call here decrease health as we want to decrease the health now what damage this will be well this will be the incoming damage and then we can just make a branch here to check if our player is indeed dead and if it's dead we might want to you know disable the player input and also maybe ragdoll the character so we can get the parent mesh and set simulate physics on here to be true and then make sure that mesh has the collision settings of uh, collision enabled query and physics so all the bones who interact and collide properly with each other and with that said we should be good to go and you know we can go ahead and right take damage from our player but also let's do exactly the same thing with our dummy so we can select it on our level and press ctrl e to edit this blueprint and you can see that we have pretty much a very similar layout right with event and damage we decrease the health and check if we are dead and then do our uh, ragdoll but in this case we have this new component right which we just created which is bpc stats where we can just delete this health nodes and this check and we can just leave the ragdoll and delete this health variable and then just get BP, uh, bpc stats and decrease the health with this node and just add the damage over here and add this branch and if so we are dead we are just gonna go ahead and uh, just ragdoll and with that said we can also lower the uh, max health initially of this actor to be maybe 20 right and now you can see that everything will stay as before i can go get my rifle shoot and he will basically die of course maybe we should increase a bit the uh you know his mm, you know health to maybe 50 but you get the idea so that's pretty cool now one thing that i also want to do is to uh also kind of increase the um, the health of the player over time right uh so in this case i am going to go to the begin play so when the game starts and i'm going to do something which is a set timer by event if i know how to type set timer by event and then on here what we can do is just execute okay one event every so often in this case it will be every uh, point um, five seconds imagine this will be looping and then we will create a new custom event that this timer will call which will be something as heal player right and what will heal player do we'll simply just get the bpc stats and uh go ahead and just do increase health okay and with that we're good to go and what new health will be well we can put like 1 or 0.5 uh, whatever you prefer let's try with 0.5 and then I am going to just do a little check over here and only heal the player if our current health okay is maybe lower than a certain value right uh, we can do that mm, in this case it will be less than our max health so get the max health and boom we'll have it here so if you know our health is not maxed out we will basically heal the player slowly okay and this timer will be every 0.5 seconds in a loop calling this event as simple as that 
So let's go ahead and just add a little kind of um, shortcut to apply damage to the player. So this will be something as uh, the bug uh, key F1. And this will just do apply damage to what actor? Well, self. So, you know, it will apply damage to ourselves. And let's put like, for example, 10. And now when we go ahead and uh, press the F1 key, uh, key in our keyboard, uh, after a few seconds, we should die. And also you just notice that the <laughs> viewboard changed. So let's change the key. Okay, on here, click to one. Okay, not F1, but one. And basically we will not change the viewport render style. <laughs> um, we can test this once again, press one. And after a few times, we will die. So one thing that we need to do now is to display a health bar, okay? Mm, so let's go ahead and do so. So for this, we're gonna go ahead and just go to our UI folder, and you can see that we already have an existing HUD widget for our cursor, which actually mm, also looks absolutely horrible, and don't worry, we will uh, update this mm, soon, <laughs> okay, hopefully. So first of all, let's rename this to be something as crosshair and let's just disable this variable because, well, we don't need to do anything with this image. But now, what we'll do is just add a progress bar and rename this to be the health bar. And we will make sure that this is as a variable so we can do things with this health bar. And we will just change the anchors to be at the uh, bottom left as it is kind of on GTA. And let's put this position X and Y to be a 0, 0 and alignment 0.5.5. And now we can, you know, change the x values over here to kind of, uh, you know, increase it, make the size uh, y kind of like this, and x expand it, and then reposition this. Now we are missing the minimap, and so I want to come, you know, kind of finish this up. But let's put this to be kind of reddish, okay, for now. And then we're gonna put 0.7 on the percent just to kind of see the color and so on and us to edit the widget itself, okay? And now what we need to do is update this health bar. Now we could do this on the player blueprint or in, even in the BBC stats, which will not be very good because we need to cast to the player, but imagine that we do it on our uh, player. Now this would work, but because this HUD is only gonna be on the player, what we can do instead is create a binding. So every time that a value changes, we will update this percent. So let's create a new binding. And in this case, this binding will get the player uh, stats health and update this value. So how can we go ahead and access the character? Well, we could cast to the, um, you know, uh, player blueprint, right? And we could, let me just put BP player and then say, get player character, right? and do this, but I don't like this because we're gonna spend a lot of resources and also get a reference to the player character, which isn't very good. Imagine that later on you want to convert this sprite to be multiplayer, right? So we could also do this maybe at the event graph, at the event construct when the widget is created, like the begin play of the widget. But again, the get player character reference isn't very good. So instead I'm gonna create a new variable called this player blueprint or use BP, and then put the type as BP underscore um, player. All right, and this will be an object reference. And then on the player blueprint, when we go ahead and create the widget, and before we do this, I am going to go ahead and just get the component of, where is it? We have now a lot of them. Okay, we don't even have a variable for this. So let's right click, promote a variable, and this will be the HUD widget okay so we're gonna save our widget that we created as a variable and there we go we don't need this and now we can access this variable and then go ahead and you set the player bp variable to what well in this case self and now we will have a reference to our player directly from you know a variable and not casting or anything like that and now we can just get this player bp and then just get the uh, stats component and then just get the health the current health and then just pass this over here now of course there's sorry plug this here 
Now there's a little thing, and it's that this percent goes from 0 to 1, not from 0 to 100 or whatever our max health is. So the only thing that we need to do is divide this value by our max health. So get max health, divide this, and this will return a value between 0 and 1. Plug this here, and boom. Now we have it controlled. So if I now press play, I can go and press 1, and boom, you can see the health decreasing, and also, <laughs> and also going ahead and uh, healing up, which is pretty interesting. Uh, but if I, you know, make our player die, boom, we're dead. Also, I will create another variable right over here. Uh, so just right click, promote this variable, and is dead. I will go ahead and, you know, leave it as a variable. And why? Well, simply because now I can go up here and not uh, heal the player if is that is not true. So like, not boolean, sorry, and it's not true. So it will only heal the player if we are not dead apart from this other uh, thing, right? And now that's pretty much it, okay? So I can go ahead and, you know, we can apply damage to our character. Imagine that we are getting shot by a policeman. We die, we will not heal up again or whatever. And we can also do the same with other actors that have the component and just kill them like I saw. So that's it guys, if you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel. Remember that you have full access to the private files through Patreon or YouTube members. Uh, check out my Discord server, join, go ahead, link in the description to tackle me and other devs. Check out my new course with Game Dev TV on how to make a game in Unreal, it's basically a stealth game, uh, link in the description. Uh, check out uh, all my socials and follow me, um, and now with all that said, bye bye.